What's up guys, Asian here again with a third PTS Patch Notes video. Again, I'm doing a series of videos on this latest PTS Patch Notes because it is so large. Future PTS Patch Notes videos might not be in the same format, but just because 5.0.0 made a bunch of sweeping changes, I am breaking this down into separate videos to make it a little bit more digestible. So in this particular video, we'll be taking a look at just the changes that were made to the Nightblades. So I do have links in the description below to the rest of the videos, taking a look at each of the different classes, as well as sort of gen general uh, elsewhere changes and base game changes, along with a link to the full PTS patch notes if you guys want to read the entirety of that uh, at your own leisure. So let's go ahead and get started with the Nightblade changes. So under the assassination skill tree, Deathstroke, which is the ultimate uh this ability and the incapacitating strike morph will no longer apply major defile to the target incapacitating strike will now apply minor mangle to the target for the duration of the stun if cast at 120 or more ultimate soul harvest retains all of its current functionalities so removing that major defile just is a nerf more for pvp because obviously from pve we don't really care about applying defile to the bosses because most bosses obviously don't benefit from any sort of healing debuffs um so more of a pvp uh debuff uh nerf i should say uh comparatively grim focus they removed the minor berserk buff from this ability and its morph the spectral bone now heals for 30 33 percent of the damage dealt if you are within seven meters of the target when firing it they also fix an issue where this ability and its morphs would continue to persist after logging off the merciless resolve morph this is the magica morph and now increases healing done to 50%. The Relentless Focus Morph, which is the stamina version, uh, increased the duration to 30 seconds from 20 seconds, but the Morph will no longer grant minor endurance. So this is pretty much going to be a straight nerf in PvP, from my understanding, because you mainly use it for the minor Berserk buff. For PvE, it's a little bit more complicated, because yes, losing that guaranteed minor Berserk buff does suck for Nightblades, However, you can still get Minor Berserk from healers, and very good healers are able to provide very good combo pair uptime. Uh, and so, it, in some regards, this is not really a nerf, this is just more of a shift, I should say. Rather than having the Nightblades focus getting Minor Berserk, they're now relying on the healers, like or the, the other base game classes. So right now, the only class that can get Minor Berserk would be the Magical Warden and the Stamina Warden if they decide to slot Bird of Prey. Um, this basically brings Nightblades more in line with the other base game classes in the fact that they do have to rely on Combat Prayer now for the Minor Berserk buff. So in very, very good groups and very solid groups, this is not going to be a change at all. For the progression groups, for the groups that who, where their healers are not necessarily going to get 100% uptime on Combat Prayer, yes, this is going to be a nerf overall. Uh, for Teleport Strike, this ability and its morph will no longer stun NPC enemies. Instead, targets affected by the initial damage will be afflicted with Minor Vulnerability for 8 seconds. Note that the Minor Vulnerability will apply to both players and NPCs. So, no longer stunning, but it does apply Minor Vulnerability. So this is an interesting mechanic here for Nightblade tanks, because Teleport Strike does not have a minimum uh, sort of teleport distance, so you can use it right up against the boss, and it will apply Minor Vulnerability. The question is, of course, is this going to replace Infallible Aether? And generally speaking, probably not, just because Nightblade tanks don't have quite as much group utility as a DK tank or a Warden tank or um, arguably a Necromancer tank, although I'm still kind of playing around with Necromancer tanks group utility bonuses. Um, so it is a potential option. You might maybe see something like a DK tank and a Nightblade tank for the minor vulnerability that would open up uh, a slot for, on the healer, an armor slot on the healer, so they can slot something else instead of IA. Uh, but for, I think for most groups, they're probably going to end up sticking with IA here just because Nightblade tanks, again, don't really bring as much to the table as um, DKs or Wardens or even Necromancer tanks. So the Shadow Skill Tree. Aspect of Terror, Disability, and its morph no longer snare the target after the fear ends. Aspect of Terror now fears up to three enemies uh, from two. Master Stereo, which is one of the morphs, no longer applies minor maim to the targets affected. It also increased the number of fear targets to 6 from 2. Um, so they did change how fear works, so enemies that are fear no longer run away. Instead, they cower, so it's more of a hard CC uh, reminiscent of Dark Talons, rather than uh, sort of just scattering everything. So this is generally going to be a buff uh, to Nightblade tanks again because of that change to fear. 
Dark Cloak, they changed how Dark Cloak operates. So now heals the caster for 4.5% of their max health every one second, and duration can increase to a maximum of 8 seconds with other passives. The tooltip will now state the value you healed for rather than how it scales to prevent confusion, and they fixed an issue uh, with the morph where this ability had cost reduction for the rank up progression rather than increasing the morph operation of the healing. This will result in a cost increase of approximately 7%, but a healing value increase of approximately 3%. So this is a big nerf to Nightblade tanks, because now instead of a burst heal, this is now a heal over time. So you don't have a burst heal now as a Nightblade tank, which really sucks. Um, the now Nightblade tanks, while you do get to apply Might of Vulnerability, you lost your self-heal as part of a trade-off, and that... I think it's not a very good trade-off. You now you don't you don't really have a burst heal to rely on, and in PvP you don't have that burst heal anymore. So I'm assuming that this is more for a PvP adjustment rather than a PVE adjustment. Uh, but Nightblade tanks, sorry, you guys lost your burst heal. Dark Veil. They adjusted the passive to grant a flat one or in two second duration increase to shadow abilities rather than eight and fifteen percent duration extensions. The duration of these abilities before allocating this passive have been adjusted to ensure the total duration remains relatively the same through their current alive values. And now the Summon Shade ability. This ability now scales with the caster's max magicka and spell damage or stamina and weapon damage. The shades now will attack every 2 seconds rather than every 1.5 seconds. And they renamed the attacks of the, shade, the shades deal with each morph to help improve clarity. And they fix an issue where these abilities do not increase in damage as they ranked up. The Dark Shade will now deal 50% more damage as part of its more functionality. The AoE attack it casts can now happen 5% more frequently than before and deals 20% more damage than the default attack. So this is a fairly interesting uh, mechanic here. Uh, with the Dark Shade buff, I'm not sure if this will be used on Magicka Nightblades or not. Probably not, uh, just because I'm just thinking of like the skills you're currently using. Uh, none of them, you can't really swap out any of them for Dark Shades, um, but... This might be a little bit more beneficial for tanks, which definitely use this for to apply minor main uh, instead of using like a uh, heroic slash. Uh, the dark shade morph uh, will mm, is nice for an AOE minor main, um, but overall I can't see this being all that useful in PVE context. PVP, I'm not sure how you guys use this in PVP. I know some people do use it, but again, this is not really my area of expertise. Uh, so somebody else who night blade PVPs might be able to shed more light onto this change here. Surprise attack no longer applies major fracture. Instead, if you use the ability on the flank of an enemy, so either behind it or at its sides, reduce their physical resistance by 5%. This effect cannot stack, but will always prioritize the highest value. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Where I still need to see how this physical resistance reduction is applied, whether it's applied to the base resistances or after all debuffs have been applied already. So we'll be doing a few tests to kind of, uh, kind of suss that out. Uh, now the wording here, the effect cannot stack but will always prioritize the highest value, is going to be more for um, groups with multiple stamina night blades running multiple surprise attacks. This basically says that if you have two or more surprise attacks, whichever surprise attack will result in the higher reduction will always be prioritized. Um, that's not saying so. The prior reading to this was, oh, it'll always um, reduce based on the base, but now that it has kind of been kind of thought over a little bit more it's probably going to be acting more like crusher where it'll always prioritize the highest crusher value um in that regard veil of blades to fix an issue where this ability was not getting this was not getting stronger as the ability ranked up total damage at rank four will now be increased by 6.6 percent finally the siphoning skill line crippled they adjusted the, the ability and the debilitate morph to follow their standardized damage over time and rule set so they increased the duration to 10 seconds from 8 seconds and increased the damage per tick by approximately 4%. This will result in roughly the same overall DPS but over a longer duration. They reduced the snare potency to 30% uh, from 40%. Crippling Grasp now adds a 2 second delay between the first damage over tick and the initial hit, but they also increased the damage of the initial hit by approximately 25% and increased the damage of each dot tick by approximately 25% to make up for the damage loss. The ability increases the snare potency by 50%, and you can also apply it to multiple enemies. Drain Power, they increase the damage of this ability and its Sap Essence morph by 25%. Uh, this ability and Sap Essence now grant major sorcery rather than brutality to better represent the scaling mechanism that the skills use. Power Extraction increases the damage of this ability by 20%, and it will continue to grant major brutality, so straight buff to Drain Power and its morph, so it's going to be even stronger now for AoE fights in PvE. Uh, in terms of cripple, this is 
pretty much going to be a wash. It's a, They adjusted the damage, so it's not going to be any sort of change to DPS overall. Siphoning attacks, they fixed an issue with this ability and its morphs had a cooldown on the heal. Um, since light and heavy attacks already have their cooldowns, um, this previous interaction meant if you had a set such as Blood Moon, you were not gaining the full efficiency of the bonus, so light buff, I suppose. Soul Shred, which is the ultimate, they increased the uh, radius of this ability and the Soul Tether morph to 8 meters from 6 meters. They adjusted the Soul Tether morph to adhere to their dot standard, so they added a 1 second delay between the initial hit and the first dot tick. And they increased the damage by 4% per tick to make up for the loss of that first tick. The result in the same DPS or heal per HPS, but with less burst. They also fixed an issue where these abilities did not get stronger as they ranked up. The initial hit and dot will both gain 1.1% increase per rank. So overall, Nightblades, uh, this is generally going to be a wash. I know there has been some concern over uh, the loss of Minor Berserk and Grim Focus, but like I mentioned earlier, this is mainly going to affect PvP, less so for PvE, because you can still get Minor Berserk from Combat Prayer from your healers. This is going to be impact more progression groups and groups where you're not able to get 100% uptime on Combat Prayer. It's not going to be really going to affect sort of end game groups where their healers are able to uh, get very good minor berserk uptime. Uh, generally speaking, uh, PvP Nightblades definitely saw a larger nerf than PvE Nightblades. I'd say the PvE Nightblades are about e even, uh, maybe a little bit of a nerf here, just because you will no longer get 100% minor berserk, you're now relying on the healer for minor berserk. Um, and for Nightblade tanks, uh, even though you did get a nice minor vulnerability buff from Teleport Strike now, making you a little bit more viable, you did end up losing a self-burst heal, um, so it's kind of a trade-off there. So it remains to be seen how Nightblade tanks are going to enter uh, kind of the tanking meta here. So that is it for this video. hope you guys found this informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.